very good afternoon to all of you myself dr sanjeev sharma dean research of sterling global university so on the behalf of om sterling global university i extend very warm welcome to all of you on this expert session on india startup day being organized by om sterling global university i am very thankful to honorable chancellor dr puneet goel sir and honorable pro chancellor ma'am dr punam goel and worthy vice chancellor dr np kashik sir for giving me this opportunity to welcome you all to today's session on newton's law of entrepreneurship converting academic research to successful business start it gives me immense pleasure to introduce our keynote speaker our pro vice chancellor dr ajay pradar sir and dr shobhana pradar dean corporate relation and training om sterling global university i feel enormous pride in introducing and welcoming our very distinguished speaker dr sunil dhorle ji founder and director cambridge membrane system private limited pune maharashtra and techno orbital advanced material private limited kanpur before entering into the foray of entrepreneurship dr dhole has proved his metal in the field of academic also he is a phd from it kanpur and former post doctoral fellow from belgium he was also senior research scientist in rin dr dhole thank you so much for joining with us today and i am sure that students and faculty of home sterling global university will be highly benefited from your word of wisdom i would highlight the fact that earlier basic research used to be pretty straightforward a scientist had an idea performed the research and this and disseminated the result broadly through publication as you know already but now paradigm has shifted today scientists can take their work beyond a publication by patenting and commercializing resulting technologies the government and universities alike are encouraging students researchers to take their work out of the lab and, and into the commercial sector but trading and experiment experimental design for a business plan is not for everyone the choice requires a careful examination of one's self and one's technology it also requires learning and entirely new language resources are available to help scientists make their way however it comes down to a personal choice for those who decide they are they and their business idea are ready they have the potential to experience the satisfaction of seeing what they have developed meet a market need by getting it into the hands of the public so keeping this scenario in the mind our university is organizing today's session to provide an impetus to our budding researchers and entrepreneurs i hope all of you will have great learning experience today thank you so much now over to dr ma'am dr shobhana uh, thank you dr sanjeev and uh, it's really uh, today we have a wonderful you know session on newtons of entrepreneurship converting academic research into successful business start uh, and business and the startup so first of all i would uh, you know uh, tell you about something about that uh, what do you mean by you know what is the aim of entrepreneurship the major aim of entrepreneurship is to introduce a new product in the market and the secondary aim we can say is to earn a profit otherwise the business will be not successful or an entrepreneur actually is a risk taker and innovator he or she helps in fulfilling the customers demand in an innovative manner some steps included the research into commercial product that turning your research into commercial product is to disclose it access it protect it license it so these are some of the you know minor features and uh, accordingly you know we can learn a lot from our today's speaker and prior to that i request professor dr ajay pradar ji for his keynote address over to you professor dr ajay pradar the voice is not there there is no voice
Yeah. Okay. So you are able to hear me? Yes, it's audible. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shopna and Dr. Sanjeev. I indeed it will be a definitely a very good session. And uh, from the university side, uh, uh, formally welcome to Dr. Sunil. And I hope uh, that uh, the students in the faculty available in this uh, webinar they will be benefiting by the experience and level of Dr. Sunil. Uh, the startup is the reality of uh, today's country and it's a pleasure. None of the startups are coming in the university in, in the in the country. And many many but the problem is that many startups are coming up, but they are also getting off in a very, very short time period. That is because of the lack of research, lack of the knowledge, lack of the finance, or lack of the other kind of characteristics what an entrepreneur is required. Let me tell you that what is actually a startup. Some people are actually big, uh, they are not able to distinguish between the business and the startup. A startup is something which is actually required that you already have some, some product is already there and you are adding some value into that project. To that project. And because of that, uh, adding uh, our uh, value addition, that product will become a more uh, uh, profitable or more uh, uh, acceptable to the people. So that is the startup we actually were talking. And uh, I hope uh, that Dr. Sunil will be definitely giving uh, the more light onto this. Newton laws, as uh, we all know, that it is a, it is a, a active, it means whatever the activity is happening, you will have the reverse uh, uh, activity for that. So I hope uh, Dr. Sunil will definitely uh, connecting this Newton law with this startup uh, and we will be having a very good session. So with that, uh, once again, uh, welcome Dr. Sunil and uh, over to you, Dr. Sunil. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Ajay. And it's really, uh, you know, before speaking from our eminent speaker, today's experts uh, lecture, uh, uh, from Dr. Sunil Dhole. He's an expert speaker on this entrepreneurship and, you know, academic uh, research activities. He is actually, you know, PhD uh, from IIT Kanpur and postdoctoral research fellowship from Belgium. So it's really a good to hear uh, that uh, he's having uh, this much of exposure. And today's all our, you know, students and faculties will be getting the knowledge uh, related to you know the academic research, how we can convert into uh, the startup. So over to Dr. Sunil Dhole for your session. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thanks a lot, all. I think all the three doctors who introduced me. It, I think this is the first time three people have introduced me in five minutes. So thank you so much for this honor. <laughs> And uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I would like to, I mean, thank you so much for inviting me and I'm thankful to the OSB University uh, for this opportunity. Uh, at the same time, uh, of course, there, there are a lot of community members from your side that uh, I can see that there are a lot of people or my friends or well-wishers have also joined in this call. Uh, there is uh, a team from Schneider Electric. Uh, there is a team from greenhouse gas reduction, uh, and then there is a team from YCS Tech Shop. So there's some lot of outsiders who have joined this call. So let me share my screen so that. Okay, so can 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 your team permit me uh, the permission to share my screen? Um, screen is not visible. Are you presenting? Yeah, yeah. I, I want to present, it's, but in order to share visible. my screen, it's yeah, not visible. In order, in order to share my screen, you have to allow me to share the screen. That there, there is this, uh, you know, um, the setting which. Uh, your team has to allow me to to allow the screen uh, to share the screen. Uh, we actually already allowed you. That is why you are in in the session. I think if you can try again, it can be, you know, work out. Uh, let me. Let me. 
Let me see. So what it says is that you can't share your screen. You must grant permissions in order to screen share. So somebody from yeah, your like the host Mr. has Samal, to allow me. Yeah, Mr. Samal. Mr. Samal, are you hearing me? Yeah, please uh, contact with the IT person if some problem is there. Because you know, you know, prior to other sessions also we didn't uh, do like this. Once the speaker entered there, it's already you know they can able to okay. share. Okay, I don't know what is happening with me. Uh, Dr. Sanjeev, you can see the webinar ID. Can I try to exit and then join in again? Maybe that will help. Maybe, maybe, yeah. I'll just do that in a minute, okay. Or other, we can take the IT person right now in this picture and he can guide you if some problem is there. मिस्टर समल आप मिस्टर ललित को इसमें ज्वाइन करवा के इनसे बात कराइए कि कैसे क्या प्रॉब्लम है मैम मिस्टर ललित इज चेकिंग इट शी इज वेट फॉर सम टाइम या यू प्लीज टेक केयर डॉक्टर प्रवीण जी वी आर जस्ट टेस्टिंग कैन यू सी माय स्क्रीन मिस्टर समल आप डायरेक्टली डॉक्टर सुनील से कोऑर्डिनेट कर लें अभी स्क्रीन पर ही यू कैन टेक केयर राइट नाउ या इट्स नाउ विजिबल Dr. Sunil, we can see your screen now. Sunilji, up here. Yeah, all okay now? Yeah, visible. Hey, up. Uh, continue, please. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can hear me all right? Yes, yes. Yeah. So uh, thank you all. Uh, so as Ma'am was telling, the the role of an entrepreneur is to generate not only to generate a profit and launch a new product. it is also to generate a lot of employment and to penetrate to penetrate science in the roots of the society can i request all to please mute your respective uh, uh, mic
ओके थैंक यू सो मच द नाइस सॉन्ग हैज गॉन नाउ सो लेट मी let me see if i can share something which is equivalent to the song so my talk today is on the the title is newton's laws of entrepreneurship so basically i am trying to convey here based on my wisdom or experience whatever i have learned during last 10 years uh, on converting the academic or lab skill research into a successful business or so called startup so i started my companies when the year was not not even started so i'm talking about on 10 12 years back so the very first and important thing we will go you know the terminology i'm going to follow is the newton's laws of motion and we all of us we know the the newton's different laws but mostly all of us 100% we know the newton's laws of motion and the reason i explain entrepreneurship through the newton's law is that it is very easy for the science or engineering students to connect these laws not just with the entrepreneurship but with the with the life or with the progress in general as such and i strongly believe when newton had invented these laws or when he got a hint about these laws so majorly he thought of a philosophical reason behind coming these laws i mean this is my personal understanding then we of course we started connecting it to the science so the very first law as we all know is that unless acted upon by a force nothing <clears throat> nothing moves so what is the very first thing an important thing what does this law tell us so it tells us that dr sunil can you please louder your voice a little bit so that we can have a clarity more a little bit volume yeah. of your voice louder okay yeah. can you can you hear me now yes yes yeah, okay, now it's fine. Fine. yeah so the very uh, i'll just uh, switch up my video so that you know i get a good network so the very first law as i told uh, few minutes back unless acted by a force nothing moves so what does this law tell us that the important thing if you want to move anything in your life whether it is career whether it is you know whether it is your your motivation or whatever you want to do in your life the very first thing you need to find is that that force so what is that force in a personal person's life or in in a in a life of an entrepreneur so it is the purpose and in my case that purpose was mostly water so i come from a very humble background i come from a tribal village a tribal village in the in the state of maharashtra from the vidarbha region uh, i come from a village which is like around 300 people population and i have seen people it is so remote that we have struggled so much in the childhood for the drinking water or for collecting water and so many people used to get sick so many kids used to die because of the water so my force my purpose since my childhood i i knew that i am going to do something related to water so that was my my purpose so once you find the purpose then half of your battle is done then you, you once you find the force then your job is to find the direction so once you may find a force but you will find that there are so many directions to kind of achieve the goal in order to satisfy that purpose and there some of the directions may be some of the roads may be very very simple roads you know straight forward roads no bending no no khadda on the road no gadda on the road but it is based on your wisdom you have to decide which road to take maybe the road which you see which looks like very easy one it may not be the best road to achieve your purpose to 
achieve your success. So what you see on your screen, so this is a, a very 600 square foot hall, a very shabby looking place, shabby looking gate of a leather tannery. And that is where my first company, Techno Orbital, started. So though the direction was looking very, 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 very difficult and hard and shabby, but we, I took this road and we started our very first company, Techno Orbital, and we, we bought a second hand 100 liter reactor. So what we did here in the first company, we knew how to make one specialty polymer, which is a co-polymer. And that is what we and me and my partner who is from IIT Delhi, who is from, I mean, PhD from IIT Delhi. So he knew, we knew how to manufacture this polymer at the lab scale. So we decided to manufacture at the pilot scale and then we will go for the commercial scale. The beauty of this polymer is that it could be or it can be used for water purification membranes which can work under gravity. So that was the, the intention to develop this polymer, then to commercialize this polymer and to make membranes out of it so that we can provide a drinking water to the millions of people in India and that drinking water also without wasting any water and without the need of electricity. So this is where it started. So now I will quickly jump to the second law of Newton's. And I'm sure in the audience, there are so many people who are a, who are diehard fan of Bollywood movies. I am one of them and I know a couple of them who have also joined today's lecture. They are also very diehard fan. So second law and the very famous movie starring by Amitabh Bachchan and Shashi Kapoor. Oh, sorry, uh, uh, Rishi Kapoor, I guess. A very famous movie, old movie in I think 70s or 80s movie. And there, there is a huge connection between the Newton's second law of motion and movie Diwar. What is that connection? There is a very, very famous dialogue in the movie which says, Mere paas maa hai. And I'm 100% sure every one of you have heard it or used it or jokingly, jokingly or seriously, whatever. So what one, one brother is trying to tell the other brother who is having lots of money, lots of power, lots of connections with him that he says, though you have all these things, but I am more stronger than you because I have a mother. I have a support of mother. Mere paas ma hai. So why is ma so, so important? Because your force is equal to ma. Now, what is ma for an entrepreneur? What is ma for me? It is force is equal to mass into acceleration, m into a, mass and acceleration. But what is mass for me? For an, for an entrepreneur, mass is a team. So how good team you built from the beginning? Even if it is a one person or two people, you have to have a team which is having a same passion, same vision and same force or purpose as you are having. And then acceleration is your funding. Once you have your idea that what you want to do, once you know clearly in your mind that this is what I want to do, this is the, the kind of society I want to serve, this is the product, you hire a right team, you get a support of even if it is a one person, two person team it is very easy to get the funding. And now it has become very easy because now the infrastructure is so good, like you have all these incubation centers everywhere, whether those are private incubation centers or in different IITs, CSIR labs, NIITs and all. But when I started, it was very difficult, but I could raise money by, you know, by, by selling my dreams on the water purification membranes and by sharing my purpose of serving people, people with the, with the you know affordable drinking water so i could manage once you have the good purpose people also join you and you you manage the mass and acceleration mass is your team acceleration is your funding so once whatever shabby looking photo i shared with you in the previous slides so we started manufacturing a polymer there and we could successfully prepare or manufacture that polymer 
and we could at lab scale we prepared or manufactured hollow fiber membranes or what purification membranes and once we did that then we got an investor who is become uh, who has become our fourth partner right now so the the screen uh, whatever land you see on the screen so he donated this land to us along with some money and by using this land and his money so this is the first shed we came up with so here we installed our commercial 2000 liter polymer reactor wherein we started manufacturing the the polymer at the at the commercial scale and parallelly we started as i told you mass is not just the team but you need to start or you need to collaborate with the right people even outside your company right institutes so we we once we made this polymer we started distributing this polymer uh, with different you know scientists in india outside india with different iits you know csr labs even even the startups in the uh, usa those who were working on the membranes we started distributing this polymer saying that okay you can make very good membranes out of this polymer and these membranes can work under gravity also you don't need any electricity to operate these membranes or to purify the water and people started using our polymer and they came up with their own membranes and to to their and our surprise of course it started working on the on the gravity and we started getting claims as per the who norms so one such technology or one such product was developed by the one of the csir labs in pune which is national chemical laboratory and once we had those membranes then of course we we made those membranes and then uh, we kind of approached different people and then of course one of the very big corporate contacted us for those membranes for the household purifier so i will be discussing that soon but once we made those membranes we we got more funding and this is what the factory in kanpur look like today so on the screen you can see uh, one of my partners dr shri kumar vedu is from iit delhi uh, i mean his phd is from iit delhi he worked in us also he worked with one of the nobel laureates in us so this is how the 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 company uh, infrastructure right now looks like and what do we do i mean what is that lab scale research we did which we converted into a commercial reality or business so what you see on the screen so this is a hollow fiber membrane made out of our own polymer which we have branded as polynorbit so what is a hollow fiber membrane so it is a very tiny pipe it is like we are talking about maybe 0.8 millimeter outer diameter and 0.4 millimeter inner diameter and the the walls of this pipe tiny pipe are porous so we are talking about a average porosity of 20 nanometers what does this 20 nanometer do so if you look at the water the smallest impurity in a water is a polio virus which is 30 nanometers in size so if you kind of pass water say from out to in or from in to out so this it is shown here in to out so it will retain or filter out all the impurities like viruses cis protozoa bacteria turbidity and we have even modified the chemistry of this polymer so that it can also retain the iron from the water okay so this is the technology so then we we take thousands of such fibers and then we we seal them and we convert them into a, a, a cartridge or membrane cartridge which you you might see in some some you know pipe like cartridges white cartridges in the in the water filter or canned filter and all so this is how that ultimately the membrane looks like now what what are the products then once the technology from the lab is converted into this commercial product we started making lots like you know lakhs of meters of this fiber so what do we do after making this fiber so the first product we came into the market is a community water purifier called tech gel so it is a water purifier you can see here so it has pre filters the micron pp pre filter then carbon pre filter and this is our ultra filtration membrane module so it works under gravity so whatever water is coming under the pressure from the overhead tanks is filtered 
through this unit and you get a water which is without any virus bacteria cis protozoa turbidity even pesticides and iron so you can see in in most of the remote areas these these units are installed so right now we we are having around 1000 such plants in india so once we started this to begin with this was our first product then tata contacted us for commercializing this as a tata swatch tech gel as a community purifier so they are also doing this and up to that so this is a slide which shows tata swatch uh, tech gel so the, this picture is from the northeast i think mostly this is somewhere from the up uttar pradesh so after the community one then what we came into is you might have heard about lot of you might have heard about a household purifier called tata swatch so they have multiple variants so this is a household purifier varying from like this one is 10 liters this one is 9 liter this one is 13 or 14 liters uh, a top and bottom container so now this is the this is our membrane cartridge so which is the heart of it so based on our technology these three products are there in the market and uh, as of now as i told you in the beginning that we we wanted to the purpose what i had in my mind that can we serve millions of people in india with the drinking water which is affordable and this works without electricity and right now as as we speak today as i speak today we are serving 6 million people in india per day which is 60 lakh people in india per day and maybe by year or so it it would go up to maybe 20 25 million in million uh, you know uh, people in india per day so that's the team uh, that's the very very initial team uh, or the mass i would say uh, so that i had i had this old picture so i just included this now we are still at the second laws of uh, motion which is force is equal to mass into acceleration so as i told you mass is like accumulating different people acceleration is raising the funds based on your purpose and team but at the same time mass is collaborating and getting you know becoming part of different innovative companies so is been nanotech uh, most of you might have heard about this company Uh, so i also on the on my journey to the entrepreneurship i became a director in this company also i am also partner so majorly this company is driven by my partner dr sandeep patil so it is again a kanpur based company so what do we do here in ispin our our strengths are the the main purpose of the company is to develop various nanotechnology based tech, you know products so we do lab scale nanotechnology uh, uh, lab scale electro spinning machines wherein you can make uh, nano fibers and we have supplied these lab scale machines all over the world i mean all the like develop developing third world countries wherever it is so based on these our own technology around 2 years back we decided that should we start our own product and just before covid coincidentally we launched our nano fiber based n95 mask which is branded as swasa and this was just before covid without knowing that covid is coming we just i mean god helped us to launch this in time and we were the company one of the companies in india to start manufacturing n95 mask nanotechnology based mask first company in the india and uh, to our surprise it was launched by the prime minister modi during the ayodhya bhumi pujan just in the middle of covid and after that of course then uh, not just modi ji uh, uh, mamta banerji and then all the like political clown and then uh, even the hollywood tollywood and uh, whatever would you say like kangana ranaut this is a prabhas the bahubali actors and it has become one of the famous uh, brands in india right now and we had touched a scales of around you know uh, manufacturing 1 lakh mask per day yeah and there there are more things which we are working in at ispin nanotech these are dissolvable nano nano fiber based uh, strips which are like medicines which just dissolve in your mouth so you don't need to kind of swallow them then i'll come to the third company so in in the, on on my way to the entrepreneurship then we started two more companies called chemdis membrane systems and indima fibers so chemdis is uh chemdis group of companies is based out in in pune so we are majorly into the engineering 
uh, we do we do you know uh, all the process engineering turnkey projects distilleries refineries and all and at the same time indima fibers is uh, incubated it is an incubated company at iit kanpur which is mostly focusing on developing an indigenous fiber for the bulletproof jackets in india so what did we do what do we do in these companies to begin with like uh, chemdis membrane systems and indima fibers in collaboration uh, uh, with, with these two companies uh, so when the second wave of covid was at peak in india nobody was manufacturing oxygen concentrators in india we all were importing them mostly from china and there were so many issues of like the purity was going down there the, the, those were expensive and then the service issues were there so chemdist was the first company to come up with the oxygen concentrator 10 liter per minute oxygen concentrator in india which was giving around 93% purity and the drop of purity was not there so we used our very core knowledge of chemical engineering and solved the issues of purity drop and you know we came up with a concentrator which is suitable for the indian conditions whether it is humidity temperature or the variation in the temperature and humidity in india so we solved those issues and to your surprise or even to our surprise we manufactured or we commercialized this product in 15 days time during the second wave and we got a order from prime minister's office for for the pm cares uh, you know uh, pm cares uh, fund through pm pm cares fund and we got orders for entire three states like state of maharashtra chatisgarh and goa so as on today our 6000 such units are running in the different primary health centers in these three states then we are working on some new concepts called membrane distillation membranes which are kind of going to be uh, 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 i would say replace not replacement but it is going to solve some problems which you have on the reverse osmosis membrane but i'll not go into the detail of this but these are the membranes which you can get a water like this is the feed water indigo blue pigment uh uh effluent or waste water and when you pass through these membranes this is the quality or you know uh, clarity of water you get then again in order to increase our mass so what sorry i'm sharing here in order to increase our mass we uh, just and year ago we started our own center of excellence at the iit guwahati uh, you know a nano center department and there we are working on around 13 to 15 different projects which are uh, helping us or which will be compatible to whatever technologies which are developing right now or whatever business we do right now it is complementing with that and we are coming up coming up with the new generation technologies by while working with the iit go so iit goati chemdist uh, 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 center of excellence is again part of the mass building and what we do primarily at that uh, center of excellence so in chemdist as i said we do uh, in certain key projects so what you see on the screen this is a plant which we are building right now in turkey uh, this is ethanol from the corn base ethanol as you most of you might have heard about that ethanol is going to be uh, blended in the petrol we are already blending 10% by 2025 will be blending 20% of it and that this is a bio kind of fuel or green energy fuel which we will blend into the petrol so we do these plants so what you see on the screen is 50000 liters per day uh, ethanol production plant in turkey so what we are developing with iit guwahati we are developing more derivatives from the ethanol so once we install the ethanol plant so what all things we can further develop from the ethanol so that we have you know more valuable products it might be like ethanol to i think there is some some disturbance can you can you hear me yes sir yes sir yeah yeah there is some disturbance i think maybe 
some of you need to mute Please check up okay, disturbance Can you check it with the IT people? Please check. Yes, yes, ma'am. I have yes. Yes. Yeah, it's I think it's oh, it's still coming. So anyway, I'll I'll continue. I think in the in the wake of uh, you Mr. know. Mr. Samala, IT people, please take it. 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 so it is the the voice is coming from uh, i think voice is uh, coming sir aap thoda sa loud bol dijiye yeah. loud voice is coming yeah yeah no problem i'll anyway i'll continue so yeah so what you see on the screen is an ethanol uh, project which we are right now installing in turkey so from this uh, we we are developing different derivatives which can be manufactured from ethanol like different uh, arma intermediates different nsp new generation energy products so that is what we are working at iit guwahati right now so one of the one of the best or i would say uh, star project which is happening at iit guwahati right now is the generation of green hydrogen from ethanol or from ammonia or from bamboo or from methanol so this is something which you know since most of you might know that hydrogen is going to be a new generation fuel if you want to reduce the the uh, carbon footprints of the world if you want to get rid of the issues because of the pollution if you want to get rid of rid of get you know uh, rid of the uh, if you want to get rid of the uh, global warming so hydrogen is, hydrogen is something we know which is going to come as a rescue uh, solution so we are working on various technologies to develop green hydrogen from the uh, ethanol or from ammonia or from various feed stocks so there there, there is one more company i think uh, i'll just quickly go through it so vivocon technologies is mostly focusing on the uh, uh, focusing on the defense base application the very first thing which we are trying to commercialize here is a powder which is a wound healing powder like uh, you can just uh, spray this or put this powder on the wound and it it will immediately uh, you know uh, blocks the bleeding or it is a hemostatic powder so this is something which we are developing in vivocon so the the brand name of the product is dust to heal so we just dust it on the on the wound and it heals the wound so uh, uh, this brings me to the the last law of newton's uh, laws of motion and the, of course or the third law all of you know that it is very simple that every action has equal and opposite reaction so if you translate this into an entrepreneur's language so what it says is that bigger the risk you take bigger the gains or the success you can achieve to put it in a very simple words no guts no glory no legend no story so this was my story guys so i was also invited by the president of india a uh, few years back to appreciate our work in the drinking water sector uh that's all i had to sh you know share with you that's the wisdom i gained during last uh, decade or so so thank you so much for your time and i'm so sorry for the disturbance in between but i can take some questions i guess uh thank you dr shobhna and all thank you thank you sir so any question answer session dr sir, pravin and dr sanjeev uh, kindly take care for question answer session so if any participants want to ask any questions is welcome yoshi is welcome if you want you can you can write your questions or you can email me also ma'am has my email id so if you are shy to us you can email me or you can message me or you can send in the chat also since we have a time so that is why we have to utilize the time so please ask some questions uh, or uh, you can ask on behalf of your students 
or Dr. Sanjeev on behalf of your students. Uh, good afternoon. This is Shripath from Shadow Victory. And uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Sunil and uh, the other team for this presentation. It was very nice and it was very uh, inspirational for uh, young startup uh, people. And uh, I have uh, been interacting with uh, Dr. Sunil in the past uh, few months. So I know many of these stuff, but it is still uh, it's some lot of new information that I got. Okay. <laughs> the suggestion is that uh, that uh, the uh, one of the responsibility of uh, entrepreneurs is to develop more entrepreneurs. So I, I yeah. suggest that uh, every successful entrepreneur should uh, strive for uh, creating some more entrepreneurship or even incubation or something that will really help to our country. And uh, morally, uh, this innovation and research. Uh, uh, enthusiasm has to we have to keep it up and we have to grow it yeah. because this is really bring a lot of shine to India and will become the uh, leader in the world. So thank you very much. Thanks a lot. I mean, for the, for the team who who don't know, uh, uh, Mr. Shipat Kale, he is one of the innovation directors uh, in India for Schneider Electric. So thank you, uh, Shipat sir. Thank you so much for the suggestion and looking. Yeah, we'll we'll try to do that. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, any more yeah, questions yeah. are there from the participants? Anybody is interested in asking any questions, please. I think I, I finished early so that we can interact more. But if there are no questions, maybe you guys can have a tea or a coffee break, no problem. <laughs> Dr. Praveen, uh, please see in the yes, chat. Ma the interesting question is this uh, session was very interesting, and Sir has explained uh, uh, Newton's law of entrepreneurship in a very interesting way, uh, using some interesting methods also. Uh, I think the, nowadays, uh, two, three branches in the, I'm a member of computer science engineering department. So, uh, two, three branches are coming up like artificial intelligence, uh, uh, cloud computing, IoT, so many things are coming up. So, uh, I want to ask you, sir, how these laws are like, uh, I'm also, we are also in the research side. Uh, we are having a very good research department. Uh, so, how we can connect our research ideas? Uh, so that we can get some uh, like uh, uh, good projects into our university and uh, uh, our students can also get some benefits uh, and we all are at benefit. Faculty also get involved and in getting the government projects. How can we help you, sir? Please guide us. Yeah, I think uh, uh, that's a very, very good question. The very, you know, in order to, I mean, this question has maybe three two, three different questions. The first question is that how do you connect these laws to even different fields, not just what we did in chemical engineering or mechanical engineering, but it is not restricted to that. So uh, we ourselves, uh, one of the startup companies I have is in, is in the in the Internet of Things uh, space, IoT. So we are developing IoT socket for the uh, EV chargers. OK, so it is totally a software based company and uh, we are also trying to develop software based heavy metal uh, detection in the water we are we are developing that uh, you know uh, that model so i mean these laws are like universal so what is important as far as the academic research or lab scale research is concerned is that what we lack what i understood based on my last year or last one decade uh, interaction with different iits or csir labs what we lack is that the the commercial understanding of the idea which you are working on and we mostly we focus on publishing patenting and all but all it needs is maybe a couple of days of discussion with your students teams or maybe with your colleagues just to understand whether this idea is it going to make sense in the commercial reality or in the world is it going to serve some people if it is if it is successful and whether it will be affordable. So if you try to innovate or do research by keeping all these points in your mind, it will be very easy to you know uh, come up with the ideas which can be commercialized. And entrepreneurship 
not necessary that you need very you know huge rocket science to always come up with the company the major businesses are done with the simple simple solutions or simple products okay so it is just that you you whatever new things you start working on just try to understand whether this can be used by people if it is commercialized whether it can be out whether it is affordable can it be scalable and does it does society need it so once once you have answers to these questions then you can easily come up with the the technology or the idea which can be utilized or which can convert be converted into a business or startup i hope i i answered most of your questions yes sir thank you sir yeah. yes very well said sir yeah one more thing i would like to interrupt that uh, as uh, as dr sunil told us about the you know every action has an equal and opposite reaction you know according to newton's law third law of motion every action has an equal and opposite reaction as we all know so these two forces you know act on two different bodies for example while swimming you push the water backward the water in turns pushing you forward so this is also applicable if we talk in terms of we can say running a business you know right sir yeah absolutely so yeah, this so you, you have to be ready for every you know every action every reaction you will get so whatever action you take you will get a good amount of reaction not always it will be a very good reaction it most of the time it will be a good reaction most of the time it will be a very very unpleasant reaction but can you sustain it the important thing is you know if you ask suppose if in the room there are 1000 people if you ask them do you have a dream they will always not a single person will say i don't have a dream everyone has a dream the question is can you protect your dream so at what extent can you work out in order to put, protect your dream and that is what makes a makes an entrepreneur or any any i would say any person who is excelling in his field or in her field so they try to go extra miles to protect their dreams so just having a dream is not sufficient you should protect it you should protect it and we can say one more thing that we can able to take a risk also risk yeah. capacity should also be you know they yeah. are in addition simultaneously absolutely and uh, as uh, told us dr sunil uh, that uh, the you know the purpose of business is to create and keep up customers you know many people think that the purpose of a business to make a profit only yeah on the other hand we can think it uh, in a different manner right sir can you yeah. elaborate a little thing on that yeah i mean see profit will definitely profit will definitely come that is the that is one of the the side product in the business but what you should aim for is that can you create an an employment and the very important thing of an see that one of you tried to explain the difference between entrepreneur and business so aap jab koi dukan bhi khol dete ho to it is not an entrepreneurship it is a business so what is the difference between entrepreneurship and business so entrepreneurship is to convert science into a national empowerment so can i take science can i convey science to the every nook and corner of the country and make society so much empowered that i grow in every field so any you know if you look at any developed country like these countries are not developed because the political system is right or wrong or it is a religious system which is right or wrong they are developed because because their science is very 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 advanced or the science is developed and the science has reached to every corner of the country so the first thing for a country to be able to be number 1 in the world is to percolate the science and that is the job of an entrepreneur so can i can i utilize whatever science i learned at the say at at iit kanpur or whatever schools colleges i learned at not just for the exam exams but can i convert that science into a product 
into a business and can i take my country to the next level so it is the science which is important for taking country you know to the to the higher levels so that is the power of the science so our and the the major job of conveying the power of science is is mostly people who are there in the universities like you so you have to convey the science to the to the students so it is the science which will make their careers you know it is the engineering science and technology which will make their careers and which will take this country to whatever we are aiming for like 5 trillion dollars company or maybe by 2050 we are saying we will be 50 trillion company a uh, 50 trillion dollar country so it is the science it is it is not just talking and you know uh, following some some religious practices or doing some politics it is the science which will take this country to the next level so that's very true sir so any more questions from the participants if anybody is interested in asking any questions you are welcome i think no more questions are there uh so now i request you all to raise from your seats for the national anthem punjab sindh gujarat maratha dravid utraya banda vindhya himachal yamuna ganga punjal jay dhitaranga tab shubh naam jaage tab shubh arshish maage nahi tab jay ta जय 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 So very good afternoon to one and all present here. Uh, those who don't know me, my name is uh, Dr. Pradeep Sagal. I'm member of CSC department in School of Engineering and Technology. It is such an honor for me to get this opportunity to thank you all, the dignitaries. I extend my gratitude to our honourable speaker, Dr. Sunil Thole, to take out his precious time from his busy schedule. to grace this event i thank you sir for inspiring and encouraging us on this special day i also extend a heartfelt thanks to our keynote speaker dr rajiv poda bardi pro vice chancellor sir for his words of wisdom i want to say a special thanks to inspector shobhna poda ma'am our dean crt and panel expert for her kind guidance and for providing immense support to make this webinar successful i must thank all our members of organizing team and it department for their timely support for the webinar on behalf of the research department and school of engineering and technology home study global university i would like to express my gratitude to all the participants of the webinar for their presence and contribution to make this webinar a success thank you everyone once again for making it a great success have a nice day thank you dr sunil dole and thanks a lot thank we you. catch you once more yeah <laughs> sure thank you ma'am thank you thank you all thank you. Yeah.